Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a sister's choice table runner. Now we're gonna use a jelly roll to make the runner. And we don't need very many strips, which is perfect. This one has 20 strips. It has some lights and darks, so this will be just great. So get your strips and let's get started. Before we get started sewing, I want to show you where to find the free pattern that I wrote. On our website, there's a whole section of free patterns. Click there. And this is the latest. This is Sister's Choice that, we, that I just finished writing. And if you click here, you can see everything you need there. So let's get back to the project. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the package and see if these need to be ironed. Sometimes we have to iron them to get them flat enough to be able to cut them successfully. Sometimes they're already nice and flat, it just depends. I have a feeling that these are going to be flat enough. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna take three or four at a time and put them right along one of the lines on my cutting board. And these are nice and flat. I can smooth it out. I don't feel like it's wrinkled. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay out three or four at a time all along the board here. I have all 20 strips laid out here. I've got two of them here and three in all the other stacks. So I've got a maximum of six layers here. I can cut six layers at a time. If you're not comfortable cutting that much, then you might wanna lay out less. So I'm gonna cut this all into two and a half inch strips. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I can get 20 inches here and not get my selvages near. So the 20 is right there, so that's great. So here's gonna be my first cut. So I like to line the ruler up with the lines on the board. And because this is such a long cut, I'm going to use my weight here. So this will hold that in place while I cut. All of these strips are going to get cut into two and a half inch squares. So all I have to do is move this over two and a half inches and I'm lining up again on the lines on my cutting board, putting the weight back down to help me hold and making a fresh cut. I like to stack up each fabric individually. So I'm just gonna go through and put all of the same fabric in one stack because that'll make it easier for me to pick off the ones I need for each block. Now that everything is sorted, we can start laying out some blocks. So a Sister's Choice block is basically a five by five block patchwork, but some of the blocks are gonna be made from triangles. So we're gonna take eight of these and eight of these and we're gonna draw on the diagonal right across there. I like to use a sharp pencil. You can use chalk, but just draw straight from corner to corner on the back of eight light squares. Now, because we're using a jelly roll, we are only going to get one half square triangle from these two squares. So this is not the method that we would normally use. We are going to stitch right along the drawn line. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut a quarter inch away from that line. And we are not going to use this in this project. You can set it aside to use for another project, but we are going to get one half square triangle and we are going to press the seam towards the dark side. Now we're ready to do our five by five block because we've got these guys done. So these are gonna go in the corners and they they point toward each other. That's the easiest way for me to remember which way they're gonna face. So they're always gonna be pointing towards the middle there. And this is the outside of the block. Then we're gonna fill in with some other colors. Now we're gonna take four of these squares, and put them in the corners here. And there's no hard and fast rules for what color is gonna go where. We are gonna be making all of our blocks differently. So you wanna just get a nice variety of colors here. I'm gonna use this for the corners. And I like to put all of my stripes going the same way. You don't have to. You can turn them different ways. It's kind of a matter of preference. 
Let's use a little more blue here. This is a nice one. We'll put it in these four spots. And then all we have left is the very center. And I think that will look good with a nice dark red. Now we're ready to put our block together. These blocks are so easy. And let me show you a method that I use. I'm going to take these first two pieces and put them right sides together and stitch them and leave them on the machine. I'm not going to snip the threads. So leave that right there. Take the next two pieces, put this right sides on top of that. Don't spin them or twist them and stitch this on and leave it there. Now the next two, again, right sides together. This way we don't have to worry about getting our pieces mixed up or our rows mixed up. So I'm going to go all the way down this first row, stitching the pieces together. So we're going to leave this all in a string here. We're going to open this up and we're just going to take the top piece here, turn it over and stitch it onto this first one. And we're going to go right down the row. So there's the last piece and now all the rows are made and they're attached by these little strings so we don't have any danger of getting anyone upside down or out of order. Now we need to finger press. These are real easy to finger press because this seam allowance here because we've got the seam there it wants to go that way so we're just going to help it along we're going to press it that way. The next one wants to go that way because you've got extra bulk there. So I'm basically alternating the directions all the way across the row. For all the rest of the rows, they're just going to be pressed in the opposite direction of what you did on the first row. So this one, the seam is going this way. So this row, I mean this seam here, it's going to go to the left, then to the right, then to the left, then to the right. So just keep finger pressing all the rows going the opposite way of the seam that's right above it. Now we're ready to sew the rows together. So we're just simply going to flip this over. All the seams are matching up easily because they're all nesting and it makes it really easy to sew this quickly. The block is all stitched up and it's finger pressed, but we wanna iron it nice and flat. So I can feel that the seams are all going the right way and I'm gonna iron it dry first and then with steam. And if you look at the back side, Everything is going opposite direction, so it's laying nice and flat. Now we're going to make four more blocks. We're going to make a total of five blocks for the runners. But the blocks are going to be a little bit different. The layout's exactly the same, but we're going to pick some different colors to do the pieces with. For this block, I'm going to use dark in the corners. I'm going to change everything up. So I'm going to use exactly the same method that we used before to make the block. I'm still going to make half square triangles, but I'm going to put a lot more light in the middle here. And the block is going to be made, again, same method, but it's going to turn out really, really different. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of these stitched up. All five blocks are done. It's so much fun to see how different they turn out. Every block, again, made exactly the same way, but each one unique. And you can experiment and make all different kinds of blocks. Now, I think these will really look best if we put a fabric between them and around them. So let's go down to the store and pick out a nice print that these will just shine on. For the background, I'm going to pick out a light printed batik, something that's like the backgrounds on these ones here. So these are the kind of prints I'm talking about, something that's very muted. And I think that will work really well. The blocks will show, but it'll float into it a little bit. Perfect. For the sashing and border, I'm just gonna cut some two and a half inch strips and sew those between and around the outside of the blocks. I've subcut some pieces here. So they're 10 and a half inches, which is the size of the block. And I'm just gonna sew these between all the blocks. Now I'm going to take the rest of these pieces, sew them into a really long strip, and sew it on both of these long edges. Mm -hmm. 
The runner could be done now. It looks really nice, but I do have all of these squares left over. So I think a pieced border would make it look really good. So I'm just gonna take some of the extra pieces. I'm gonna just alternate colors. And I think that that will look really good around the edges. Yeah, this is looking really good. So I'm gonna put some borders on the two short ends. Then I'm just going to sandwich it up. I'm going to put down the back, the batting, the top, and I'm not going to quilt this on the quilting machine. I'm just going to do it on my regular machine, stitch in the ditch, bind it, and I'll show you what it looks like. Now that the runner's all done, you can really see how different all the blocks turned out. It's so much fun to just make one block over and over and have each one turn out so differently. I just did very simple quilting. The center square, around the block and around the border. So you can see it on the back, there's just a little. You can, of course, add more quilting if you like and outline all of these stars. It turned out 18 by 66 and was just really fun to make. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make a sister's choice table runner from a jelly roll. We hope you enjoyed it. Happy quilting.